Hi, I'm Christina. Welcome to The Void. We're here with Max Cavalera on the seismic Return to Roots tour. So how has it been so far and what's it been like kind of stepping back into this record? I uh, love the name, The Void. Yeah. It's great. Into The Void, Black Sabbath, yeah. it's classic. Into The Void, yeah. All, everything with Void is good. Uh, yes. The tour is amazing. Yeah, we had a great show last night. We are very happy to be here, back here. You know, we have so many great fanatics in Australia, you know, they really love um, everything pretty much I touch, you know, they love the Killer Be Kill, they love Soulfly, and they love this. Uh, Return to Roots is a celebration of Roots, which is 21 years old, and it's really well done. We played the whole record from beginning to the end, and it's, uh, yeah, it's going down great. I think tonight should be a great show, and we're just very happy to be here. Well, we're very happy to see you guys again. I mean, I, uh, there's a saying, you know, in Australian parlance, there were two bands we all agreed on in the 90s, and they were Pantera and Sepultura. And everyone, they were just the bands everyone agreed on. And that was, um, I think the album, for me, like I've been listening to it all week, getting into the vibe. And like I hear Cutthroat, and I'm a 14-year-old angry teenager again, like instantly. W what does it feel like when you step into, like the first song? Like, where do you go back to? Uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, the, the whole show, you know, I, because I think we are playing even stuff we never played before, which is really exciting, you know, and I think I really didn't realize uh, how cool of a record Roots was until we did this. You know, it's like we dissect the record song by song and the songs that weren't really special when we made the record became special live, stuff like uh, ambush and look away born stubborn we never even played those songs ever you know and then you have the classics on top of it and then the stuff like real uh, I call it kind of like it's like punk metal you know cutthroat stray hate that's there's like a, there's like a, a really it's a really vicious sounding songs that just want to get unleashed in the pit and just want Makes you want to break stuff, which is great. <laughs> well, that's one of the great things about your band as well, and especially with like, you know, heavy metal has a lot of like fantasy and escapism, and punk rock's so immediate and aggressive, and you kind of bring these two things together so amazingly. Like, it's it's really exciting to kind of see it all happen. And like, I've been I've been reading about the story of you guys. So, um, the story of Roots, they went to the jungle of the Amazon and made an album with the Zavantes tribe, is that how I say it? Mm -hmm. And so that all happened there. So it's like this traditional music fusing with this heavy metal stuff. And I think it's really exciting to bring that because there's something ancient about like the rhythm on it. And, you know, I feel like you've kind of blended these two cultures, like heavy metal's 30, 40 years old, but that's like 500 years old. And, you know, we sit here on the gravesite of a, of a really rich, one of the oldest cultures in the world. We have a really ugly history here with the way we've treated our indigenous people and I just think that's, that's one of the most it's yeah. the same in Brazil yeah. they all got messed up you know and that's always one of the reasons why we wanted to uh, record it roots with a tribe in Brazil because I never even been on a tribe I lived my whole life in Brazil I, I knew about them and even one of our great 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 mothers um, is uh, supposedly we have some Indian blood, me and Igor, you know. My mother always shows us pictures of her and she looks really wild, you know. And um, But it, it, it was like, it's in our own country, but we never even really knew until we went there. And it, it was a fantastic, amazing world that was like so unreal. And um, wow, what an experience. And that's like, it's right in the middle of the record. And I think that was so cool. And, that was, and it was very original. It's never been done in metal before. I think that was the other thing. I think it draw attention uh, on the whole world that you could do stuff like that with metal. You know, we kind of open the door um, to even to other bands to embrace their own uh, roots, their own origins, whatever. You know, their their heritage. And I think I think it was great. You know, that's why we have like so many different people really love roots, like uh, from Dave Grohl to Mike Patton to black metal guys. They they all like they respect this record very much. Oh look, it's Igor. Hi Igor, I'm Christina. Hello. W welcome, welcome to The Void. See, it's a name you Sorry. can really commit to. That's okay. Yeah. It's a name you can commit to. 
because he that just, he yeah. just came from the void. Oh really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just showed up. Yeah. He got sucked on the Australian <laughs> void and now he's here. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. He's been buried from from deep in the earth. It's yeah. returned to roots, so we're doing a whole thing where they've actually been in the ground in the tree roots for a true return to roots. That yeah. Works. What's been your favorite new song to play live that you don't usually play from Roots? Well, there's a lot of stuff that we, we never perform in the, in the whole, I mean, when we did in the beginning. But my favorite would be, uh, I think, It's Adi, which is like doing samples from the original Shavantes tribe and, and bringing that, you know. So it's something that it's completely different than we haven't done before, so... That's really amazing because we were just talking about that and the experience in the jungle. Yeah. So that was a really nice follow through. Yeah, what was that day like when you guys recorded that? Well, it, it was a few days that we were there and it was like life changing completely to the point that there's no energy, like uh, electricity. And so we had to bring like car batteries because generator also like they make a lot of noise. So to record what we did, it was done through uh, car batteries hooked up, so it was it was really cool. But also, at the same time, it was great to exchange something instead of just going there as a, as a tourist and just watching them. Actually, we were there exchanging our ideas with our ideas, and from that we came up with a whole song. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, How we, yeah? We even played for it. it's an it's an I said it in a book, but it's really I've been reading it. It's amazing. A really cool uh, part where. The chief came up to us and, and we're like, he, the, the, the tribe is really curious about your music. You know, can you guys do a sampler? And we're all like, we can't really do our heavy stuff <laughs> yeah. without electricity. But we, we do have a song on our last record, Kaiovas, which was instrumental. And we had all the instruments there. So we had the, we had the drums and we have the acoustic guitars. Um, so we play it, you know, and they all did some crazy chanting noise, and and uh, we asked, I asked the chief, what what was the noise? And it's like they they want it again. It was like more, you know, <laughs> so they really like it. So we play it twice. That's you know? awesome. And you gave them lifetime royalties as well on the record. Did they yeah. build a children's and school or something. The instruments there. Yeah, that's Hopefully yeah. Create a rock band. Yeah. Have you spoken to them since? No, but yeah. I, there is a lot of. Uh, I just saw an article on the internet, my wife just showed me the other day, about um, Indian bands from the Amazon playing heavy metal. It, with the painted, and uh, so it's, it's really cool that something did happen with that whole experience, you know. Well, they're both like, you know, they're both, both cultures in their own way, like heavy metal as a culture, and that's been kind of passed down, and you know, Sepultura coming from a Motorhead lyric, like, you know, and this then, you know, you guys staying in music for so long is really profound as well. And, you know, I was thinking about it as well, like I've been watching a bunch of your old stuff, and you're talking about how like God draws crooked lines and straight lines and stuff doesn't necessarily make sense at the time, but over time you can kind of make peace with it. And I know you guys went through a lot of, you know, pretty hard experiences with mortality, especially as little children and stuff. But I think it's it's really profound that you have then found music and you've soothed like millions of people's pain through this primal kind of expression. I don't know. Yeah. What are you, what are your thoughts on this matter? Oh, that's almost like the the coolest uh, thing that can happen uh, with uh, with this music is that what you get from people. You know the. Um, I don't know, like the kind of uh, vibes we pass through the music. Um, we heard from them, like music has helped them going through a hard time, you know, helped them going through, you know, death in the family. Um, I even have letters from, uh, I had a letter uh, like a year ago, the guy was in a death row in America Whoa. and, and uh, Chaos AD was his favorite record, you know, and it's like, that was so heavy, you know, it's like, it, it didn't hit me until like a, a while later. I was like, man, this guy's, he, he, and he explained he was young and he, there was a, a drug deal went bad in his house and he killed two people. And he went to, they, you know, to death row. And, uh, yeah. But he was a little bit wild too. He wanted me to do a cover album <laughs> of Dio, Dio songs. And I'm like, I can't do that, man, you know? So, you know, I, I did, I, I wrote him back, but uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's amazing, like, how, and, and just even being just here in Australia, we never in our 
wildest dreams growing up as kids in Brazil. We thought we we're gonna come to Australia and play for thousands of people. It's, it's amazing, you know. I, I think also the the cool thing is, you can only do that if you experience that, and that's something that we did. I remember like me and Max in Brazil and uh, listening to certain records or, or tapes at, in our room and going through a lot of crazy stuff in our life and that's our little escape it was being in the room there and just listening to music so i think you know at the same time that we now we write the music but we've been on the other side where we're ju as just as uh, music fans so it's something that it's it's super important i think you know like when you have the to how to put your energy into music and that's what we did as like teenagers in brazil a lot of our friends, they end up like in jail, dead, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And we focus on, on playing music and that's why I think we, it kind of like saved our lives. Well, it's, it's really important and it's cool that your mother was like supportive of it as well. I think it's really cool that you guys just made a decision and went for it. And you know, that seems like that's, you know, you guys have kept going no matter what happened. And that, you know, I think that's really important. And I know we, you know, as Australians have always embraced all of your music and all your bands, yeah. because I think, um, yeah, I mean, a whole generation of us got through hard times, with, with especially with this album. Like, yeah. it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, so I was reading about your mother's like religion, like um, Condomble, and my, my one of my best friends. She's Indian. She married a Brazilian guy, and so she's been to some of the ceremonies and stuff. And she was sort of telling me about it. And it's pretty fascinating. I, I read that you took Mike Patton to a ceremony and had him cleansed. What was that like? Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that was Igor's idea. Yeah, I, I mean, Mike, it, it's one of my best friends. Like, we knew each other for like years, and also Max. But we were in Brazil, and he asked me about it, and uh, kind of like he he was curious more than anything. And I was like, "Yeah, I'll take you." So we took him to, uh, and he loved it because there's a lot of like really crazy African rhythms and and being mi mixed with the Brazilian culture. And, uh, you know, the thing about our mom, it's really important that you have the support from your parents. You know, as a teenager, it, it's really, f especially if you go, you know, do arts or, or something that it's not like sometimes you know, even we had to drop school and do stuff like that. And to have to support from her to do that, that was, uh, I think, one of the most important things. If we didn't, it would be another battle that we had to go through it. So... It, w it was great that we had her support that this way we could focus like 100% on playing our music and then, you know, later on surviving through our music. And it's, a, it's cool that y the whole family can kind of project and see where it's going to go because I think it's really important. You have to envision the, you know, the full scale thing well, to kind of get that. committed like in a brutal way, like we're going to make it, it, you know, like did. the whole did. world was... A, <laughs> It was like the whole world against us and us against the world kind of feeling, like for real. Uh, like the early stuff in, in Brazil, people thought we were the worst band ever, like everybody. Like we, we, yeah, we, we were friends. <laughs> Our yeah. friends didn't like us, you know. They were like, it's yeah. okay, we're cool, it's hang out, we drink beer, but you guys suck. <laughs> it's also, it's crazy because we, we knew, you know, like me and Max, I remember like, well, of course, we didn't, like he said, we didn't dream about coming to Australia at one point, but we knew that what we were doing was right, even if it was for a small amount of people or, or it got you a broad, like, Some audience. Yeah. It factor, you know? Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, even before we knew how to play, well, there was, like, an attitude, you know? Yeah. We had these <laughs> fights who break up on our shows, and even the guy that signed us, the Cogumelo guy, is like, I don't like your music, but I have to say... It was entertaining, you know, there was a fight and you guys are crazy. You know, I'm going to sign you, you know. So I think that, I think that kind of like what draw maybe me and Igor into the punk scene too. We saw, we saw ourselves more actually less related to like dragons and stuff, more related to like punk bands, Be do it yourself kind of spirit. Yeah. The whole, you know, discharge and, you know, the black flag, bad brains. That was like, yeah, you know, we really dig this, you know. I think... Uh, Maybe we are metal, but I think it, it, somehow we are punks also. I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, because the spirit, you know, is, 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 is there. And also, I think being, not being in America or 
in Europe. For us, it was our naive way of, of looking into it. And that's, looking back now, it was really great that we had that. For us, like, we remember listening to certain bands, like he said, like Discharge, and putting them on the same level as Slayer or... So it was no divisions. Yeah. And that was really important to form our musical taste somehow without yeah. being like segregated to like, oh no, I only like metal or oh, I only like this. So we, we kind of like mixed up and made our own style. And the last 20 years, I feel like heavy metal and punk rock have fused in so many ways and so many bands. And it's funny, I was talking to Tony Omi once, which is pretty incredible, but they fights used to break out of Black Sabbath shows. Like shit got wild back then in like Birmingham. Like it was a violent music that people came to to kind of, you know, feel something profound. And speaking kind of in this realm as well, you're bringing back Nail Bomb. That's a little... Yeah. That's, it's really kind of like, uh, it's short. It's only, uh, only 30 shows. I'm probably not going to do much of, with it. It was just kind of like a, a thing to do to... We had this free time and it was like... Why the hell not? <laughs> but let's just go and play that. Play. It's an easy record to play. and um, So we're just going to throw it out there. But we're really... What I'm really excited is the Cavalera record that we yeah. Oh God, on. tell me about that, yeah. That thing is crazy. Yeah? It's, I don't know, it's like a beast. <laughs> came out of nowhere, it came out of left field, man. I wasn't you know, like, ready for it. I just know that just, it was like the beast just summoned in the front of us, man. And, and now the people that heard it are losing their minds over and- That's amazing. I really, I really love the record, I thought it was really, Really cool what me and Igor did after all this year, be able to, to make a record that you're excited after 30 years. It's, it's, it's tough. It's everything. It's tough. <laughs> what was it like? Yeah, yeah. What was it like for you? I, I think we always had like a lot of really great uh, ideas together. And of course, like this, this chemistry. But I think um, it, it's just one of those things where the timing was really aligned on, on what we wanted to, to show. And then, of course, having the help of a, a really good producer, which is our friend Arthur Risk. And he kind of like understood what we were trying to, uh, to get with this record, which was something very, again, like extreme, but at the same time, without forcing, you know, being natural, being as, as we always like to do stuff. So, like Max said, it's, it's crazy, like we're super, excited you know and I, and I hope you know a lot of people will get the same feeling that we're having right now yeah. it, it yeah. came out of the what it was cool about I think was we went in the studio um, kind of like in the middle of the roots tour mm -hmm. so I think we were total uh, energized by the roots tour because we saw all those people and it was so exciting you know that we took that to the studio, that excitement, you know, and I think that was really good. Um, the record doesn't sound nothing like Roots. I think it's completely like, ex except for Psychosis, which Igor records some stuff in Africa, and we, oh, mixed, and we made an instrumental that's really cool. But um, I, I don't know, I think the going from the tour to the studio, all that together, I think like the time, the timing, you know, so uh, cool. Making records is always, it's wild. It's, you never know what's going to happen. After you do, it's not on your hands anymore. The, like the fans and the people, they pick their favorite songs. You know, <laughs> it's like you got nothing to do with it anymore. You did your part and now let the record do its part. I know? love hearing the stories about the making of Roots where you had that producer who's like a cheerleader in the studio and like, rat, like making of Rat Manhattan and talking about Manhattan and yeah. like just all the stuff that kind of came out of nowhere. It like was I feel always, like, yeah. was always good to have good producers, you know, and this time... And you had Andy Wallace as well prior to that. Yeah. Andy was great. Andy, Andy was like a master, mm -hmm. was like, we were like, uh, you know, yeah. students in the, in a, uh, you know, master class of learning everything that guy was just a master you know um but with a guy like arthur i think he comes from the underground and he's knowledgeable man you know he knows everything he knew everything about us about me and igor and got stuff out of us that normally wouldn't come out and i think that's the purpose of a great producer i think a great producer doesn't come to change you he comes to channel you mm. you know and get the best out of you and you he, know yeah. 
And you guys have always. And I never understood producers that come and try to change the band. You yeah, know, it's make like them sound completely make different on what they are. It's like we don't need a guy like that. We we know what we are. We know what we like. Yeah. We just need you to make us better. And you guys have always been savage. Like you never went through a period where you suddenly went from like thrash to a radio band or anything. And I think we're all happy that we can trust that you guys will always do something, you know, and heavy with groove as well. Like I was listening to, I was having a moment this morning listening to f Going Between Roots and Faith No More. And I'm like, you, they were both bands that you can dance to. Like the rhythm is such a huge part. Like the rhythm and the groove has always been such a huge groove, part. Groove is big in metal. It's, it's always, it's never really, um, I think it, it's underappreciated, mm. but if you if you have, uh, you know, a lot of great metal always had great grooves. Mm. I, I, I always believed that. And then having, of course, Igor, one of the greatest like drummers of the generation, bringing the, the tribal stuff to on, to on top of the groove, that was a, you know, an extra that we had, you know. Because you've been playing drums since you were super little, hey. Like, what kind of drew you to drums? It's, it's funny because the other day I was talking about this with a friend and it was even before I, I even dream of having a band when I was like six or wow. <laughs> or seven. That's when I started playing the drums. And for me, it was just about the drums. And then later, when a cousin of ours took us to see a queen play in Brazil, that's when we, we clicked and we were like, yeah, that's what we want to do. But before that, I was already playing drums. But I was playing like all the Brazilian rhythms, which is more like samba and, and, and stuff like that. So it was, I don't know, it, it's almost like if I look, it's almost like I was in, in love with drums even before I was in love with music. So it was almost like a, a primal thing. And I think that translates on the whole tribal way of playing the drums and, and trying to uh, do a lot of research. Like Max says, like right before the Zawa, I went to Uganda to do some work with, with kids, with refugees there. And then I record a bunch of uh, soundscape and also like rhythms. And then I brought some of this to uh, the new Cavalera. So it's always about searching and learning also. It's, it's about never stop and not thinking that you, you're done or, or you're too good or yeah. anything like that. I mean, as a musician, we know that it's every day. You know, you put a, a, new, a new band that you haven't heard, like young kids, and they're kicking ass and it's like, yes, I, I need to learn from this. It's yeah. not about like just going and complaining about, oh, nothing's good now. You know, it should be good back in the days. Like the yeah. Same as, as, as when we were 12, you know, like me and him. I, I don't think we grow up at all in that area, yeah. which is good. I hope we yeah. never do. Well, being lifelong you students know, is really... We sit down and show each other bands and we're reading the same books yeah. and uh, which is the... the you know, front, you know, it's yeah. like... Agnostic front, <laughs> fuck yeah. That. We love we love we love that and I think it's it's kinda like a purity. It's mm. like something pure that uh I think if you lose that then then you yeah, then it's over and then you just sold out, don't care anymore, becomes just a, a boring factory job, you know, and, and it's not that's not the case with us at all. Mm. We are fans of music, yeah. you know. We we're in bands playing for a lot of people, but we're still huge you know, fans of, of the music that we play, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want that we play and what we listen to as inspiration, you know. Are there any Australian bands that are, you've connected with over the years? Do you know a band called Blood Duster? They were like an Australian grindcore band that beat around yeah. for like twenty six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard some of the stuff. It's yeah. cool. It's, it's cool, <laughs> yeah. It's got a kind of a groove to it and kind of the same kind of yeah. We are good friends yeah. with the King Parrot guys, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tour with them. Well, the, as far as I'm concerned, they're the best live band in Australia. I felt bad for our fans. Yeah. yeah. They were they were they were totally brutalized by the King Parrot. <laughs> Matt would just show his ass. Oh he does do that. Just, just like you put them out and well, think. I had to apologize to the fans you know, when we came to play. Sorry about them, those crazy Australians, you know. <laughs> they are just cool guys, man, you know. Yeah. No, they make an interesting, they got a new record out today. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, they're in the States now. We, we thought we was going to see them, but it didn't happen. Um, I know they're not from actually Australia, they're from Tasmania, but. Uh, so and and uh, Ruins, too. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Really, really cool. But you got a lot of good music here. Dude, Australian metal is going through. A There's a little band called ACDC that's quite oh, good yeah. too. Yeah, I might have heard of them. Yeah, yeah. they might have done a couple of things. But 
it's really cool, um, like what you're saying, like going to Uganda and, and working them and what you said before about going into a culture and you're not just like looking in from the outside. Like I was watching Anthony Bourdain in Haiti the other day and he's talking about, I'm just another one of those dickheads here taking photos of you and leaving. It's really cool that you guys are actually going in there and throwing down and bringing culture back, but their culture to the world rather than you, I don't know how to say it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's about exchanging, you know, that's, that's how you feel, you know, the whole thing about doing the roots thing with the Shavantes or, or me going to Uganda, it was about teaching kids how to do little producing with little studios on their refugee camps and uh, oh, wow. so it's something that it's, it, it's cool and it's for them, it's not for me. It's for me, I learn a lot from, from the whole thing, but it's about just, you know, experiencing the whole thing. It's really, it's, you know, you clearly like lifelong learners and that's what good creative people are. Okay, I'm getting like mad rolling, rolling up. Sorry. I got into it, okay? Like it's, I've been reading a book and it's really good. Like it's so cool to like read it from the beginning in your words. Like it's so much more meaningful than... It came out yeah. pretty good, you know. Yeah. Now that I'm reading other, uh, other biographies, I, I really got into a lot of biographies lately and uh, it was something I never, because I never liked to read, to read when I was a kid. It gave me headaches. You know, I couldn't read, and so I was never into books at all. And then, little by little, I started reading. You know, I, I, you know, I read one, the other, and then, you know, I, I read Tonayomi. I thought it was an amazing. That's a really good book. Biography, yeah. Al yeah. uh, Jorgsen was great, um, and then a couple of punk rockers. One, you know, the Crow Mags. Both of them. How good is John Joseph? I love how militant. He's like the most militant, happy person in the world. He's like, eat plants, PMA, or fuck off. <laughs> it came out good. You know, I, I, I don't have, and the people I talked to, they really liked it. So I think it was, it was good. And you know, I think the, we did a pretty good job. It was honest. It was, there's a lot, there's a lot of funny stories. There's, there's like heavy stuff, yeah. but uh, that's life. We, we tackle everything. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So I want to hopefully do another one in like 40 years from now. <laughs> Right on. You guys got to live forever, right? Like you're yeah. gonna do that, right? Yeah, there'll be the wheelchair series. You can get like some, you can get like some Brazilian magic potion and live forever. Like well, you could do that's that. My mom, my mom, she's, it's crazy. She looks young, like all the time. She almost like a, it's like a witch somehow. So it's, I think we got a little bit of that from her. Like it's the energy, not not the looks, because she she's a very good looking woman. So. Well, on, on, on that note of living forever, we hope everyone does live forever and stay I hope metal, you're... Stay metal forever and keep, keep watching The Void.